to get baptized. It's an operation. It's a process. It says, you're circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So just like uh, the sons of Abraham had to be circumcised uh, on the eighth day when they were born, we're circumcised with the baptism, with a circumcision that's not made with hands. Um, it says made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. So the most high is performing an operation on us, cutting away the foreskin of the old man, the, 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 that uncleanness. And we're, it says, bury with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of the Most High, who hath raised him from the dead. See, Christ didn't raise himself from the dead. He was raised by the glory of the Father. So the same spirit, the same power that raised Christ from the dead is going to raise you from your dead state from being a fleshly, wicked man, woman, whatever. He's going to perform the operation. You're going to participate in the plot and the process. Uh, it says blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. Everything that was written in the law was written to condemn us. So now that document isn't present when we appear before the throne of the Most High. Right now, it says judgment has, been, judgment has begun at the house of the Most High. See, because it says the saints shall judge the world. When the world is judged, the wicked are not going to stand in that judgment. And we're So I have a question for you. I have a question. Go ahead. So the that operation that you're referring to, that, that only the most high can perform, that means no carnal efforts that we make. I mean, we can be in harmony with the will of the most high, but what I'm asking you is, can that those efforts that we make by our, our own ability, they're meaningless. They can't do it. Well, the whole thing is this, is, see, this is where, I, where your conscience comes in. Because as you're walking through this life, as you face different circumstances, temptations, trials, whatever, the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. So in him dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So now you have the Most High dwelling in his temple. And now you're inquiring in his temple. That means you're, 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 you're seeking the Lord, you're asking questions, you're receiving from the Lord. And you're listening. So if you're in fellowship, that means your perception is up and you're sensitive. So it's hard to really sin against the most high. And, you know, when you're when you're constantly flowing in that state. Now, if you get caught low, you know, now you're not really reading. You're not really sensitive to what's happening in the spirit. You're really bummed out about your circumstances. You're pissed off. You're not happy with your life. You, you got regrets. You wish you had did things different. You can't believe that you're at this point in your life and this is what I am. And this is horrible. Okay, now you're in a bad place. Now Satan can pull the, pull the okie doke on you. Now Satan can get you to sin against the most high. Because you're full of murmuring, complaining, doubt, and unbelief. See, but if you're walking in the spirit and you go, it says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So, Yeshia, he knew that he was going to inherit the throne of his father. And he knew that he was going to get the glory that he was going to be glorified, that he was going to sit on the throne, that he was going to rule the earth for a thousand years. So being that he knew this, he, he, he went through the motions of what he had to go through to do the will of the Father. He humbled himself and he suffered 
and he suffered according to the spirit. So that this is when it says we're saved by the faith of the son of the most high. That's how we're literally saved by his perception, how he perceived day to day living, how he looked at, you know, his place in the society, you know, what he had already accepted what his mission was. And he knew that he's going to have to humble himself. Verse 12, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of the Most High. Now that, that operation is energy, effectual working, if efficiency. So we're raised, it says, it says, we're buried with him, with Christ, in baptism, and we're risen with Christ through the faith that the Most High is effective and efficient to perform this operation on us. And we have faith in the spirit of the Most High that this is going to go down. Like, I believe that I'm going to be righteous because he said that if I'm baptized, I'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and I'll receive the power to abstain from sin. You know, but you got to stay in the process. See, a lot of times, see, Satan is attacking us constantly trying to catch us low. So either he's working through your flesh, through vice habits, he's working through your situation, uh, your finances, he's working through your health, you know, he's working through a uh, companion uh, or various situations. So if you know that he's coming, you got to have faith in the most high. You have you to have the faith of Christ. You got to know that, okay, I'm going to suffer persecution. I'm going to catch hell now because I choose to receive my judgment now so that I can rule, so that I can rule with Christ. He said, if we suffer, we'll reign with him. Well, the, the, I, I think the problem is, is that we've been programmed to believe that we can't, we can't be sin free. Right. We've been programmed to believe that we got songs and we fall down, we get up, we, you know, I mean, it's 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 in our it's it's in our everyday life that we will sin and then we could just be forgiven for the sin and we could sin again and be forgiven for the sin, but right. Now check this out. That's a good point. Check this out. Um, get these are scriptures that I started looking at in light of what I was learning, you know, in church. It's Galatians the sixth chapter. And you're right, we're definitely programmed through this satanic institution called the Christian church. You know, uh, a lot of people don't never go into the history of where their churches come from. And this is not condemning everybody in church. You know, I went to church for years. You know what I'm saying? The Most High has his elect throughout. I mean, it's Muslim, Buddhist, different people that's caught up in delusions and snares and traps that's going to be that's going to come to the realization of the sun in their point in time. So I'm not, I'm not condemning the people, but the institution of Christianity was established way, way, way long ago by Satan in the person of this dude, Constantine. This is Galatians, the, the sixth chapter, six and seven. It says, be not deceived. Okay, deceived, it is properly to cause to roam from safety, truth, or virtue, go astray, seduce, wander, be out of the way. So don't be deceived. Don't be seduced. Don't be tricked by, the, by, by Satan. It says, the most high is not mocked. That is meaning stout as whence lowing proceed from to make mouths at 
that is ridiculed. Okay, the most high is not mocked, and ain't nobody gonna be able to, you know, talk trash to the most high. So don't be deceived. Since for whatsoever a man soweth, that is through the idea of to scatter, to sow, to plant, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So that means if we relax, if we just, you know, we run, we roll with the most high, we, we, we stand strong. And then, you know, it's like in the middle of 94 degrees in the sun and you just, ah, and you just faint. No, we got to stand strong. We got to bear up. He says, and we can't be weary. That is uh, weak uh, to, to fail in heart when we're doing well. He says, let's not be wearing well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint, faint not. Um, hold on, read one more scripture. Galatians, the fifth chapter, 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, right what'd you say? So there you go right there. Right. It says, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So this is saying, all right, if you, if, if you walk, if, if, if you're just going through your day and something is on you to, to go do something that's not cool for you to do, you're going to feel some kind of way about it if the Spirit of Christ is dealing with you. Right. So now if you go against that, then you're going to get jacked up. You're going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. He says, let no man say when I am tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So Satan come and, and dangle the carrot that's, that's special to you. Like, you know, your carrot might be seasoned with cinnamon. You know, my carrot might be a garlic carrot, whatever. Is he going to dangle something that's in you? See, because Satan know you because your carnal nature is his creation. Your carnal nature emanated from Satan. And you were born in sin and then programmed in this wicked society. So he know your flesh, yourself, better than you do. So as you rolling through life, especially trying to roll in the spirit, Satan going to be popping up with different things to try to, to battle you, to try to get you out of the spirit so that you will manifest his glory. Because when we serve ourselves, we serve Satan. We manifest the son of perdition in our flesh. And the works of the flesh are alive and present in our body because we're yielding ourselves to the desire of evil demon entities that want to use our bodies to experience pleasure. The pleasure that they once felt when they had bodies. So it says... Uh, it says the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary. 